trigonometric identities. So uh, first, we're going to have to review some of the trig identities that we've covered so far, although we may not have called them identities so much. Um, for instance, we know that the sine of an angle is equivalent or equal to the inverse of the cosecant of the angle. This would be referred to as an inverse or a reciprocal identity by many textbooks. Uh, we have the others, so let's do those quickly. Cosine of an angle is equal to 1 over the secant of an angle. And of course, both of these can be thought of as the other way around. Uh, cosecant is equivalent to 1 over sine of the angle. And of course, secant of an angle is equivalent to the reciprocal of cosine. I don't know why I blanked there for a second. Now, additionally, we have this guy. Tangent of an angle is 1 over the cotangent of an angle. And of course, that means that cotangent of an angle is equivalent to 1 over the tangent of that same angle. But we also have this guy, which I told you about like the first week that we should really think about tangent that way instead of the SOHCAHTOA stuff. And of course, if tangent is equivalent to sine over cosine and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, we also have this guy over sine. So we should all be taking notes on this. These we already, for the most part, know or should be familiar with at least, and we will be using them and needing them. now. In the last month, when we were working on solving trig equations, that's not really what I wanted to do, pow. Um, we were also discussing or working with this guy. That squeaking is the, is the pen on the screen, by the way. The Pythagorean identity. So the Pythagorean identity, of course, we have iterations of those or other versions of that, of this. Um, we wrote these on the board prior to uh, break, but let's do this. Sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. And cosine squared, of course, is equivalent to 1 minus sine squared. How do we get those? Subtracting this term, for instance, from both sides of the equation. Give us sine squared on the left and that on the right. Same thing, different term. We can also, as a reminder, because we did do this, if I take cosine squared and sine squared, add them together equals 1, of course, Pythagorean identity. But if I divide this, for instance, by sine squared, which means I have to divide everything, every term by sine squared, every term in the equation, then this becomes the number 1. This becomes, do you recognize it from the other page? It should be cotangent. And this is 1 over sine squared, which is equivalent to cosecant squared. Of course, there are two other versions of this. If you just manipulate it, subtract 1 from both sides. And of course, subtract cotangent from both sides if you need a 1. Um, I'm not going to go through those. Additionally, if I take the original Pythagorean identity and divide it by cosine, I'll do that out. I was to not do it, but well, I might as well. It's going to take that long. If I divide everything by cosine squared, which of course I should be able to do since I'm working just some Algebra 1 and equation manipulation and I'm doing it correctly, this is equal to, hopefully you said tangent squared. This is 1. And this is secant squared. Okay, so you'll need to know these and you need to know them cold. You need to know them so well that they come to mind when you see things. Now, what in fact is an identity? Let's go look at that. So, for instance, this is an identity. We already talked about it in class. Okay. It's an equation 
where maybe the left and right sides don't look equivalent, but they in fact are. And how do we know that? If I put a value in for x, the equation will remain true or the statement will remain true. Any value for x, any value for x. If I put 17 in there, it'll work. If I put 3 in there, it'll work. How do I know this particular one is an identity? Well, if we actually do the uh, multiplication here, I will get x squared plus 2x plus 1 because this is a perfect square trinomial uh, d driven by, these, by this binomial squared. They look different initially, but they would be the same. And so I've just proven by completing this multiplication, the distribution if you prefer, I've just proven that these things are, this is an identity. These are identical. All values for x will make this work. This is also an identity. All values for x will make this work. That is not an identity. Because not all values for x will make that work. In fact, there's only one value for x that will make that work. How do we determine that? Well, we're back to Algebra 1, right? x equals negative 2 thirds. This is the value for x that will make this statement true. And therefore, it's not an identity. So in this unit, this section, whatever you want to call it, it's really just a section. The next couple of things that we're going to ask you to do is are really verify or prove that what I've given you is an identity. So let's do one of those. And that'll probably be the gist of it. And then uh, when you come in, we'll do some practice with that. Uh, in the textbook that I'm looking at right now to pull out examples, they refer to it as establishing the identity. So there's different language that can be used uh, to refer to this process. But we're really just, oh, I'm putting this one up here, and this is kind of a tough one to start out with. Yeah, because it was example six. Maybe we'll save this one. This is too cosecant, and I run out of room. Okay. Let's actually defer that one. Let's try this one instead. Cosecant of theta, or x, or whatever value you wish to use. Tangent theta. And secant theta. Hopefully the squeaking is not too distracting. It is for me, but hopefully not for you guys. So what can I do with these items to, to change what they look like without changing the value, of course. I can't, add one, I can't add one to one side, not the other. I can't multiply one side by a value uh, and not the other. So there are some strategies. We'll talk about them in uh, maybe the end of this video. This one's already kind of getting long, but Cosecant, tangent, and secant. How many terms are on the left? There's only one term on the left. And there's only one term on the right. So how can I change this term so that it only has one of these trig functions? Who cares if it's secant or whatever? But there are two trig functions here. In other words, two factors. And there's only one over here. How can we make it so that there's only one factor over here? One strategy that many books tout as the first thing you should do is change everything to sine and cosine. I do not necessarily subscribe to that. I subscribe to the idea of one, first of all, examine structure. And I'll write these on the center board in class and leave them up for a while. Examine structure, and that's what I just did previously. There's only one term here, there's only one term here. This term has two factors, this term has one factor. Structure. It's not two terms, so there's an addition, and how do I break this up so that there are two terms? There are only one term on each side, so that's examining structure. We've been doing that when we're solving trig equations. <clears throat> when we recognize three terms, one of them is squared, one of them is not squared, but has the variable and the other one's a constant, trinomial, we need to factor that. The second thing, that I would place this second, a lot of books place it first, but if you're stuck and you can't see anything, use the trig identities to change everything to to sine and cosine, okay? Because sometimes you do that and you don't need to. Like for instance, I'm not sure if I want to change that tangent yet. 
Yeah, I probably will. So let's change cosecant into either sine or cosine. What's equivalent to cosecant? 1 over sine. What's equivalent to tangent? Well, sine over cosine. And what's equivalent to secant? 1 over cosine. What happens to these two signs right here? They would equal 1. So if that's 1 and that's 1, then 1 times 1 is 1. And I get cosine theta in the denominator. And that's what I had over here. Is it clear that these two would be equivalent? And any value for theta will give me the same value on both sides of the equation? Done. There are a couple of rules that you have to follow as well. So typically, you cannot do any algebra. When I say no algebra, that doesn't mean you can't multiply things by the value of 1 in the form of sine over sine, for instance. But you cannot add to a number to both sides. You can't subtract. You can't move stuff from left to right, meaning you can't subtract, or like in this case, you can't divide cosecant into both sides. Typically, not able to do that. Okay, so that would be what you have. Hopefully you took notes. We'll see what's going on when you come to class.